I sit and talk to God But he just laughs at my plans He speaks in a language I don't understand Hello everyone and welcome back to the Blackford Book Club and another volume of my essential film movies collection. Welcome back everyone. Thanks for being there. I'm not a cowboy, Pam. I'm a stuntman. Initially concepted as part of a grindhouse double bill with good friend and brother Robert Rodriguez's Planet Terror, which is also highly recommended naturally. Early negative critical reaction saw both films released separately. Both fans of 1970s grindhouse cinema, whereby the theatres themselves were less than salubrious and the quality of the film print poor and decayed. This is also Tarantino's homage to stuntman orientated films of the period, of muscle cars, but it's also primarily another exploitation film. In relation to grindhouse itself, it became infamous for the poor quality, crackling sound badly edited and distorted picture that theatres would provide, and so in my own amateur homage to this, I've reviewed this fantastic film by concentrating on this, as you'll see. I've also picked and briefly described my three favourite scenes from each act. A brief premise. Stuntman Mike, Kurt Russell, is a psychotic killer who derives sexual pleasure from car crashes especially if they involve beautiful women. The film itself is split into two distinct acts with a short bridging scene in between the two. My own amateur homage to Grindhouse will be to point these out in each act, however I've only concentrated on the real crunching and awkward examples of this as the film, and especially Act 1, is bathed in them. Please don't let the grindhouse aspect of this film put you off watching, as it's a fantastic film, with rich characters, Tarantino dialed up to 10, and the grindhouse aspect just adds to the flavour of the whole piece. Did I mention the soundtrack? Sublime. Act 1, Grindhouse Homages. During the opening title sequence, Thunderbolt is deliberately and incorrectly shown as the film's title. Crunching abrupt cut from Arlene, or Butterfly, as she's running holding her crotch to the apartment of Julia, or Jungle Julia, to all three girls now driving in their car. There's a screen flicker as Jungle Julia says, who's holding? There's an abrupt cut from a conversation about Jesse Letterman to a totally separate no hooking up tonight conversation. The car containing the three girls simply disappears in the middle of the road and in mid cheer as the girls go past another billboard for Jungle Julia's radio show. There's a crunching cigarette burn before an introduction to Jungle Julia's friend Marcy. The dialogue is constantly out of sync for three to four seconds during the same introduction to Marcy. As Marcy addresses Butterfly, the reels sound as though they are turning in reverse, so we hear, so you must be, then, so you must be the infamous Butterfly. There's a completely blank slide inserted during the above conversation, and sadly, the lap dance from Butterfly comes to a crunching, abrupt halt midway through the fantastic Down in Mexico by the Coasters. Act 1, my three favourite scenes. The lap dance. Stuntman Mike. The woods are lovely, dark and deep, and I have promises to keep, miles to go before I sleep. Did you hear me, Butterfly? Miles to go before you sleep. Stuntman Mike again. Throwing away his cigarette and with a deliberate smile directly to the camera, Stuntman Mike has bad plans ahead. 
Act 2, Grindhouse Homages. As I go too far. As Stuntman Mike pulls into a parking spot, the colour is abruptly changed to black and white. As Abernathy, Rosario Dawson, is sitting on the bonnet of her car smoking, the black and white abruptly changes back to colour. There's a crunching pink distortion as Zoe, Zoe Bell, climbs out of the car to execute her ship's mast stunt. The end credits end abruptly, replaced by a written and directed by Quentin Tarantino, and then quickly and awkwardly back again. Act 2, three favourite scenes. Zoe Bell and her ship's mast stunt that goes horribly awry. Stuntman Mike, tickling and licking Abernathy's feet as they're dangled out of the car, all whilst Lee, Mary Elizabeth Winstead, is singing an awful version of Baby It's You and, naturally, yet another chance for the director to indulge his foot fetish. The end credits, a satisfying conclusion to a brilliantly unorthodox film. And that was Death Proof from 2007, directed by Quentin Tarantino. And I'll leave you in peace and in solidarity. Thank you so much for watching. See you again soon with yet more tales and my favourite films from Quentin Tarantino. Thanks for watching. Peace.